Throughout the low-level monster series, we've talked about all kinds of creatures, from the usual stuff that you would find in Dungeon Fair, to eldritch abominations, to riffs on popular culture. And so I decided that today is the best time for the best of low-level monsters. Hello everyone, I'm Kyle Ott. I'm the dork and you're watching Desks and Dorks. It's your favorite board game design and creation show. It's shaped by you. We really appreciate all the help, all the feedback. Uh, it's been super awesome. The last couple videos have kind of blown up a little bit, which is super nice. Uh, thank you to everybody that liked and shared and commented and watched and all of it. It's just great. Really appreciate it. Two, if you want to help us, liking, sharing, subscribing, those things actually do help out immensely. And if you really want to support us, the best way to do that is to purchase our games from World of Game Design. Or if you want to get a PDF copy of things, you can go get them on itch.io. Again, that's the best way to support us. So let's talk a little bit about low-level monsters. I started this series a while ago, and I really like um, the idea of taking low-level monsters and making them into something different and something exciting. It was sort of a fun way for me as a game designer and a game master to riff on you know old concepts or familiar concepts and find new ways to make them engaging or entertaining and so i thought what could be a really cool thing to do but to take the best of them my favorite ones that i have done so far and uh, highlight them in a video just like this one so if you would like to watch the low level monsters videos that we talk about i will mention the video that they are done in all of our low level monster stuff is in a playlist called low level monsters so you can check them all that stuff out there uh, i will say a lot of my editing and scripting and whatever the production value has gotten a lot better so some of the uh videos are a tiny bit not as good as they used to be but in any case i hope you enjoy it let's talk about some of my absolute favorites so the first one is this is from our low level monsters humans video but i did three different types of cults um, and i really like this idea i think human beings lend themselves to really interesting creatures because we are a so familiar obviously every single person is a human who is watching this unless you're an ai in which hi robot overlords um but the other thing is i think that humans kind of lend themselves to be really flexible a human being can be the best person that you've ever met or they could be like the worst piece of garbage that you've ever experienced so it's interesting to watch them sort of get adapted and i think because of their adaptability that's what makes them exciting creatures and exciting low level monsters cults especially i really like i really like the idea of cults um, and so there's a couple different ones that we've got. You could do your standard issue fanatic. So if you're playing an RPG that has a wound or a hit point system, giving them the ability to uh, continue to fight past um, zero hit points is a great way of showing how their fanaticism, their zeal, their desire to serve whatever cult deity they've got continues to exist. Um, I really like this plan or giving them one full turn after death can be really good, particularly if you're playing like a horror RPG like Cult, for example, or if you're playing uh, Vason, that's a really interesting thing. Like imagine the idea of like this cultist that their limbs are just like hanging together uh, by a thread and you're a thousand percent certain that you have ended them and instead they just keep coming. And I think that's kind of terrifying. So the other thing that you could do is if your system has a spell-based system, I love the idea of having the human cultist get to move up that spell-based system, essentially to jack it or like lose uh, any of the safeguards of that system. Uh, but if they fail even once, the spell winds up backfiring and then like destroying them instantly. Uh, the last thing that I really liked about the human cult as an idea is that you could grant them some aspect of the cults, uh, their cult devotion. So for example, like a reliquary or an artifact, something along those lines. And as long as they have it, they get some aspect of their God's powers. So for example, if they have a God that they worship, that's a dragon, you know, bearing the carved totemic statue of that dragon would allow some of them to breathe fire or gain fire resistance, something along those lines. Another one of my absolute favorites, and this is when uh, your boy had to bust out the incredible MS Paint skills. We did a whole episode on Mimics, and I still love it because the Mimics that I wanted didn't exist, and so I had to dig deep into the MS Paint bag to create them. And this is my absolute favorite one that I made. I love this goofy goober. Uh, this is a Chandelier Mimic, and essentially what happens is that every single turn, the Chandelier Mimic will drop down, will attempt to gore or impale people on the protrusions, whether it's an antler chandelier like this one or like a wrought metal and iron chandelier um, and it will attempt to basically gore them and then pull them up into the rafters where it will then attempt to consume the unlucky person that it is nomming on 
Um, I love this, not just because I think the idea is ingenious. Most of the time, players think of mimics as objects that are fixed onto the ground, right? The chest mimic, made popular, obviously, by Dungeons and Dragons, but also made popular by things like Dark Souls, um, is so readily obvious, and that usually comes at something like a vulnerable point, like picking up treasure. No one expects to be attacked when you're picking up treasure, or like at a save point, but I think the thing is, something as innocuous as a chandelier, something that the players often take as, you know, something for granted, especially in terms of like the aesthetic of a fantasy castle or a fantasy fort, making that into a mimic, I think is a great way to catch your party off guard and can result in some really interesting moments. Again, the other thing is if you've been following the channel for any length of time, you know that I think combat should be a puzzle. And it's interesting because like, what if the players shimmy along the floor because the chains that the chandelier mimics are attached to uh, can't reach down that far? Or what if the players figure out that heat rises and so they set small fires so that they smoke the mimics out and suffocate them? That's something that they could do, right? Combat is designed to be a puzzle, and combat is designed to be something that is um, intriguing and interesting. It, it should make the players think, and I think this does that. Um, another one, I did a whole video on cats. This was one of my favorite ones. It's actually one of our worst performing videos, uh, which was weird. I did three different cats that I thought were kind of cool, and I figured that those three different cats could each do something with the idea of nine, playing on the whole nine lives um, aesthetic. This cat in particular is the unwanted gift, is what I called this one. And the idea is that this cat wants to get nine vanquished foes. Um, those foes can be something small, like for example, a fly. It could technically be a foe to a small kitten um, or like a rabbit. It could even, you know, if the cat manages to get one damage or whatever and it knocks a guy off a scaffolding, technically that counts. Uh, but once this creature gets the nine foes slain, then what's going to happen is it gets the ability to transform into a monster. Essentially, I said three levels above the party's average level. Um, if you're playing Dungeons & Dragons, again, you could use challenge rating for this. If you are playing something like Dragon Age, I would encourage you to um, make this a demon of the Fade. If you're playing something like Cult or Vason, you could make this into some sort of really horrible Eldritch Abomination. Uh, if you're playing Call of Cthulhu, this could be a Shoggoth. Um, I think any of those things are potentially possible. This is something that I love. I love this because A, I think it's a really fun concept, and B, it slots in so nicely in a number of different role-playing games that I think it could be kind of cool. Um, and of course, now it's time for the best ways to use fantasy ooze. Uh, this is from my episode on the gelatinous cube, but this could be applicable to any fantasy game that has an acidic or uh, man-eating carnivorous ooze or jelly type monster, which is again, you'll notice that I'm picking things that don't work well for just Dungeons and Dragons or just a given system. I wanted to give you all my favorite monsters that I think are applicable in any system or could be easily retrofitted to any system. And again, I had to bust out the MS Paint because I thought it was super funny. Um, this is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, this is a pit trap. Essentially what you do is you fill in the top layer of soil with wood or sticks or leaves whatever then you have the the enemy walk over it and then of course the ooze uh, consumes them that's a pretty great way to do it the other thing to do is you could either force with weapons or lure with food and or other substances that the ooze wants uh, the ooze into some direction usually off of a ledge where it falls on top of um, an unsuspecting group of adventurers. This is a particularly devastating way to use it because if that is the case, then they're most likely just going to be like just dead on contact with the thing, uh, which I think is kind of terrifying. Uh, last but certainly not least, if you are the one being chased by it, you can lure the enemy towards you and then you can you be the bait for the particular gelatinous cube. And so, when the gelatinous cube keeps moving forward, eventually the, it will collide with the enemy that is pursuing. I thought this was a pretty fun and interesting idea as well. And last but certainly not least, this is the snake oil salesman. This is from my low level monster video um, on peasants. And I did peasants in particular because I wanted to focus on things the player could find in the lowest of low level settings, which is usually some sort of starting village. The, the thing that I love about the peasant is again, you can use this in Dungeons and Dragons. I do mention the DM's guide, but you could really use this in any fantasy setting or any fantasy game. Um, I think this would work particularly well with Morkborg, by the way, or Pirate Borg, if you use the uh, illicit substances table 
in that particular game. But again, this is just a person who rather than attack, throws random potions. So if there is a random item table in the RPG that you are playing, you can use the snake oil salesman and have them essentially just lob those at the players. What this means is that this encounter can be incredibly random, it can be incredibly interesting, it can be chaotic, um, and it can also be really fun. I had to put this one in as well because I made my favorite joke ever in a video, which was like, I talked about how the snake oil salesman has bodyguards that protect him um, because he attack, he protect, but most importantly, he oil of snack uh, for the snake oil salesman. And that might be the funniest thing that I've ever said. Uh, which, I don't know if that's sad or not, but you know what, I'm, I'm gonna roll with it anyway. But yeah, I think the Snake Oil Salesman is great, both as a chaotic and interesting way to spice up your peasant encounters, but also um, as an NPC that could be particularly fun to interact with. Remember, this is a huckster, this is a charlatan, this is a con artist, this is any of those things that could be potentially interesting for your players. Uh, but that's it for this video today. I hope you all enjoyed this. This is the best of low level monsters. I really enjoy these. This is some of my absolute favorites um, that I've ever designed and that I've ever worked with. And I really like them. And I hope you guys like them too. Uh, if you did like this video, give us a like, a share, a comment, a subscribe. Again, if you really want to help us out, the best way to do it is by purchasing some of our games from World of Game Design or itch.io. Uh, but until next time, I am Kyle Lott for Destin Dorks. You are all absolutely amazing. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.